It was in this atmosphere of dread that Adana found herself with child. At just 16, she was unwed and unprepared for motherhood. The baby's father, a trader from a neighboring village, had long since disappeared. Adana's family, ashamed of her condition, spoke of leaving her in the forest as an offering to appease the Nightwalker, but Adana's grandmother Nay intervened. Though bent with age and nearly blind, Enne was still respected as a keeper of the old ways. In the lush hills of western Uganda, nestled between misty valleys and verdant forests, lay the small village of Bukoba. For generations, the people of Bukoba had lived in harmony with the land, tending their crops, raising their livestock, and honoring the spirits of their ancestors. But for the past 20 years, a dark shadow had fallen over the once peaceful community. It began on a moonless night, when the elders gathered to perform the annual ritual to bless the harvest. As the flames of the ceremonial fire leapt high into the inky sky, a bone-chilling howl echoed through the village. The fire sputtered and died, plunging the gathering into darkness. When dawn finally broke, the villagers awoke to find their crops withered, their goats slaughtered, and strange clawed footprints leading into the forest. From that night forward, Bukoba lived under a cloud of fear. The being that had cursed them became known as the Nightwalker. No one had ever seen it clearly, but all knew the signs of its presence. On nights when the air grew unnaturally still and a foul stench hung in the air, families huddled together in their huts, praying to be spared the Nightwalker's wrath. Children disappeared from their beds. Hunters who ventured too deep into the forest never returned. The once prosperous village fell into poverty and despair as crops repeatedly failed and traders began to shun the cursed town. The elders consulted diviners and witch doctors from far and wide, but none could break the Nightwalker's hold on Bukoba. As the years passed, many families fled, seeking safety in distant villages. Those who remained lived in constant terror, never knowing when the Nightwalker might strike next. Young people were forbidden from wandering alone, and a nightly curfew was strictly enforced. Laughter and song, once common in the village square, fell silent. It was in this atmosphere of dread that Adana found herself with child. At just 16, she was unwed and unprepared for motherhood. The baby's father, a trader from a neighboring village, had long since disappeared. Adana's family, ashamed of her condition, spoke of leaving her in the forest as an offering to appease the Nightwalker, but Adana's grandmother Nay intervened. Though bent with age and nearly blind, Enne was still respected as a keeper of the old ways. She declared that Adana's child was a gift from the ancestors and must be protected at all costs. Reluctantly, the family agreed to let Adana stay. As her time drew near, Adana was plagued by strange dreams. She saw a great beast with glowing red eyes stalking through the village, its breath withering crops and poisoning wells. But in her dreams, Adana also saw a small light like a firefly darting around the creature's head, growing brighter until the beast fled in terror. On the night Adana went into labor, the worst storm in living memory broke over Bukoba. Wind howled through the village, tearing thatch from roofs and uprooting ancient trees. Lightning split the sky and thunder shook the very foundations of the earth. As Adana struggled to bring forth her child, the villagers huddled in terror, certain that the Night Walker had come to claim them all at last. But just as the storm reached its peak, a new sound cut through the chaos, the cry of a newborn baby. In that instant, the wind died away, the thunder fell silent, and a single shaft of moonlight broke through the clouds, illuminating Adana's hut. The child, a girl, was unlike any the village had ever seen. Her skin was pale as milk, her hair as white as cloud, and her eyes shone with an inner light that seemed to push back the shadows. Nai took one look at the infant and declared her name to be Mwesi, meaning moon. As Moezi grew, strange things began to happen in Bukoba. Crops that had withered for years suddenly flourished. The forest, long silent, rang once more with the songs of birds. For the first time in two decades, not a single child fell ill during the rainy season. But the Nightwalker had not forgotten the village. On the eve of Moezi's fifth birthday, the creature returned in all its terrible glory. Villagers fled screaming as a monstrous shape, taller than the highest hut, lumbered down the main path its red eyes gleaming with malevolent hunger. Yet as the adults ran in terror, little Mwesi toddled out of her grandmother's hut. Those watching from hiding swore later that the child glowed with a soft, silvery light. Fearlessly, she walked up to the Nightwalker and spoke in a voice as clear as a mountain stream. You don't belong here anymore. This is our home, not yours. Go back to the darkness where you came from. The Nightwalker roared in fury. 
But as it lunged for Muizi, the child's glow intensified until it was painful to look at her directly. The creature howled in pain and fear, covering its eyes with massive, clawed hands. As the villagers watched in awe, the Nightwalker turned and fled, crashing through the forest until the sound of its retreat faded into silence. In the days that followed, a great celebration swept through Bukoba. The curse that had blighted their lives for so long was finally lifted. Muizi became revered as a sacred child, blessed by the ancestors to be the village's protector. As the years passed, Bukoba flourished once more. The story of Muizi and the Nightwalker was told and retold, growing in the telling until it became legend. And though she grew to be a woman of great wisdom and power, Muizi never forgot the lesson she had learned as a small child facing down a monster. That even the unwanted and overlooked can possess the strength to change the world. To this day, the people of Bukoba tell their children that if they listen closely on quiet nights, they can still hear the night walkers' distant howls of frustration. Forever barred from the village, it once terrorized by the courage of one small, unwanted child.